it is January 14th and it's one, oh no, there's another one, yeah. I'm going to give you my labour and delivery story today for Baby Pearl and I feel weirdly daunted by it because it was such a big experience and so much happened and I really want to do the story justice so I'm going to go off obviously my own memories and also I took pictures of the midwife notes um, so I could see like what time things happened at um, and I'm going to do my best with it so here we go. Very early in the morning on January the 14th I woke up with um, a very strong sensation in my stomach and it's like is this a contraction? Surely not because this feels very intense and I had thought that it would build up really slowly and I'd have like a small Braxton Hicks style feeling and then move on to the stronger feelings but I think what must have happened is whilst I was asleep um, those feelings had built up and then finally that one had woken me up and that was at 11 minutes past one in the morning and by this point I was 14 days overdue so I was ready to get this baby out and I was really anxious not to have um, a c-section or an induction because I had an induction with my last daughter Darcy back in 2011 and for me it wasn't a positive experience so I really really wanted to have my natural home birth experience. I wasn't sure if I was in labour so I decided to go back to sleep and then at 23 minutes past one I had that same feeling and I was like oh hang on a second I think this might be it. So I woke Liam up and told him just to time the feelings on his contraction app that he had um, and I thought oh they're not going to be regular they're not going to come quickly because it's the very very start but again I must have been in labour whilst I was asleep and not really realised because it started coming on in regular intervals. I can't remember exactly how far apart, maybe like three or four minutes. And the, the feeling was like, uh, like a wave of really tightness, really low in my stomach. It wasn't all over the bump, it was quite low down. And the thing that helped me was basically just holding on to the sinks in the bathroom, in that ensuite we've got his and her sinks, just holding on to them, kind of like swaying, sticking my bum out, like rocking my hips a lot and doing my hypnobirth breathing. You might be thinking, what's hypnobirth? What's, that sounds hypno, that sounds weird. Um, yes, when I first heard of hypnobirthing, I was like, that's not for me. I'm not really that kind of person. Wow, it's just started raining really hard, so if you can hear that. Sorry about that, the camera might be picking up. Um, yeah, hypnobirthing, I was like, uh, I'm not really into that kind of thing. And then I met the amazing Siobhan from the Positive Birth Company. I will link her YouTube videos below and then you can find her website as well if you want to. She's got a lot of really great YouTube videos um, that anybody can watch. And she just made everything different. She taught me how to breathe, she taught me how to release oxytocin into my body and relax my body and relax my uterus so that the muscles could do everything they needed to do and she taught me to deal with like the surges which is another word for contraction which sounds just so much nicer. Surges rather than contraction. So I was having my surges on my contractions and I was just kind of leaning on the sink and sticking my bum out. Liam filmed a bit of it and it's not the most flattering footage of me but you know I, I was not worried about does my bum look big from this angle at that point. Watching back the footage I know it does but right then I did not care. Um, and we stayed up here for about two hours with me just holding the sinks. Like I felt like the sinks were my like safety net and as long as I could grip onto those sinks and like wiggle slowly around, wiggle my bum around, everything would be fine. Um, by about three o'clock we moved downstairs into our like kitchen area. Our kitchen has like kitchen, diner and lounge, like a big open plan space. So here we go. Yeah. 
is a safe and wonderful experience. I've never known you drive the dishwasher so quietly. <laughs> You don't poke a tiger, babe. Pardon? You don't poke a tiger. No. Well, what could I do to you even if you did? <laughs> moved down there and we made it as spa-like as possible so we like turned the lights down low and we lit some candles and put on my hypnobirthing um soundtrack but you could put on just like we did also have spa music at one point and just made everything feel like soft and gentle and peaceful and my god what a difference it made being in my own home with my own surroundings and being able to control those things different from being in hospital and being in a little bright room like on the center of the room in a bed with everyone looking at me it was just so nice to be at home and i sat on my birthing ball and i was leaning on the breakfast bar and <coughs> excuse me i was breathing through all the surges and then I think it was about four o'clock that we called the midwife and my midwives were Jane and Paula who were amazing and they both turned up about half four-ish and I was still talking in between contractions and everything was okay except I was starting to think like wow these are like pretty strong and I've only been doing this for three hours and how much longer have I got to do this for? The rest is a bit blurry so I'm going to start referring to the note by five o'clock they were filling the birthing pool for me we had this lovely big birthing pool um, which you can hire from lots of places or buy um, and you buy a liner for it as well and you have to get your own like food hygiene grade hose and all sorts of stuff but you can get these quite easily um, and they were filling the pool and I remember them talking about how it was too hot and I've looked at the footage and like there's literally steam coming off it have we brought down the baby bag, babe? Yeah, it's by the the office. Mm -hmm. That's my bag. There's a, another bag that's got all the baby clothes and stuff in. How are you doing? I want you never to get me pregnant again or I'll stab you to death. Pretty okay then. we will probably edit that out. <laughs> Whilst I was like, at this point I'd leant over the birthing ball um, everybody was like taking buckets of water and just throwing it out in the garden this like boiling hot water so they could add cold I do remember that part um, and then it's put here that by 5.45 I was upright and swaying one of the things that I didn't want to do was be on my back at any point because the way that that positions the baby it just makes it harder for you to give birth so I was either leaning over the birthing ball, leaning on the breakfast bar, swaying on Liam, standing up, all those sorts of things. Um, 6.10, Louise kneeling over ball, asking to get into pool, ideal temperature being achieved. So that was when I was like, um, that's when they were like taking all the water out of it. By this point, things had got quite intense, I, like the... The, feet, the power of the surges was really strong and I was not really enjoying it but still just breathing through and like everyone as soon as one came I would breathe in for four and then breathe out for eight again I will just link Siobhan's videos because I, I think she's got like a breathing video on there but that breathing you would never think that breathing would make a difference like when someone said to me before like I just breathe through the contractions I was like why are you saying this to me? I've given birth, I know how this works. You cannot breathe through the contractions, maybe the early ones, but I am living proof, <coughs> excuse me, that you can breathe through contractions. And I have no pain threshold, let me tell you, like the smallest of injuries and I'm out for the day. So if I can breathe through contractions, anybody can. Um, let's consult the notes to see what happened next. I know at some point I was sick and just wondering when that was. Um, I kept being encouraged to go to the loo, um, which I really didn't want to do at the time. Like, I was like, I can't think of anything I want to do less than, like, go and sit and have a little tinkle. But, um, 
I just sort of did what I was told really because I was like okay if you think it will help um it says here by 7 30 Louise losing mo motivation and wants to be examined by about half seven I was like please just examine me because I just really wanted her to say like that how I wanted to hear you're like six or seven centimeters dilated um unfortunately she did say six or seven centimeters and I felt like I'd regained a little bit of motivation um so I started walking around for about an hour so from about half seven till about half eight I was like very slowly walking or leaning on Liam um he had a really thick hoodie on and there was nothing I enjoyed more than like squeezing his um hoodie bit of it also there were pom-poms on a blanket that I had and I really liked squeezing those it was nice to have something in my hands to squeeze <coughs> um and then at half eight I felt really sick and I was just sick fortunately I was standing at the breakfast bar and I just said I don't know who I don't know whether I said it to Paula Jane or Liam I just went I feel sick and suddenly there was a plastic bowl and I was just sick into it and I will say that was a low point like standing at your kitchen bar vomiting and having a surge at the same time like I could cry thinking about it I did not enjoy that but the, the the bowl was whisked away and Paula and Jane just got this wet flannel and just wiped it all over my face. I was like, oh, that feels great. And by half eight, I had basically just given up. And I remember saying to Paula, I want a general anaesthetic. Just get, oh, I've missed out a bit. I got in the pool. Before I was sick, I had a little go in the pool. And that was before I was examined. <laughs> Sorry, this is all a bit wibbly wobbly. Um, before exam I was examined, I got in the pool, I'll put some footage of this over, and I, <laughs> I had lost motivation at this point. How does the pool feel? You to give me all of the drugs, all of them, every, all of them. You're doing great, Louise. So I was examined six or seven centimetres, was happy about that, um, walked around for a bit, threw up and then I was like I am done with this, I want a rest, I want to go up to bed and sleep for the whole afternoon like that was going to be something I could do and Paula was like why don't you just lay down and I was like okay I will. So I got on the sofa and I was holding this wet flannel and I put the blankets over me and I remembered thinking that Siobhan had taught us to visualise something else which again sounds so basic but you would not believe the power of the mind and also it was very spaced out because I've been doing a lot of like intense breathing so had a lot of like good happy hormones in my body from all that breathing I think oxytocin or relaxin or I don't know which but whatever it was I was glad they were there and whilst I was laying on my side I shut my eyes and I was holding this wet flannel and the weirdest thing happened I'm going to sound like I've lost my mind uh, but in my mind I went to Courchevel in the Alps I have never been to Courchevel but my friend Maddie did go to Courchevel for New Year's and put it on Insta stories and I watch those Insta stories every day and they must have just ingrained in my mind because every time I felt a surge came, come on I would do the breathing and I would think 
I'm on the slopes, I'm skiing, I was wearing a white and blue all-in-one like ski suit and Maddie was there and I was kicking the snow at her and she was kicking snow at me and we were skiing down the Alps and for an hour I did not feel the pain and I just breathed through every time I felt the surge come in my stomach and I was in the French Alps with Maddie Chester and that is the weirdest thing that I ever thought would happen on no drugs at all um, whilst I was in labour. Very weird, but I was very glad because I got my hour off, had a lovely ski trip with um, my manager and friend, Maddie, um, and then at half nine, I opened my eyes and I was like, right, I'm back, that was good. And I could hear people around me like at home whilst it was happening so I knew that they were there I could hear Liam asking if I was okay and the midwife being like she's fine but still I was in the Alps so whilst that was happening I was dilating to like a lovely 10 centimeters and I got up and then my midwife Jane was like why don't you walk up the stairs and I love Jane but I've never wanted to say to her to f off more in my life I was like I don't want to walk up the stairs I don't want to do any exertion at all because by this point like I was at the end of labor and things were really really intense um, but she persuaded me to do it somehow or another and so Liam and I walked up the stairs and I got to the top of the landing and I was like Liam I can't do it and he was like you can you can makes me feel almost a bit emotional actually walked down the stairs and said I want to get in the pool and at this point it was about 20 to 10 and I've got some footage actually of Liam filming the cooker um, to film the time because I kept saying I need to know what time it is for when I edit and at well 9.46 I started feeling the urge to push and didn't want him to film. Oh, don't film. Yep and I was in the pool and I was leant over like with my arms on the sides looking out to the garden and Paula was t just here and Liam was just here and Jane was behind me because she was like at the business end and I looked up to the garden and I felt my whole body change and the contraction feeling like the, the surges the intense like squeezy feeling in my stomach had gone and all of a sudden I could feel the baby moving down into my pelvis and just wanting to get out and I just knew that it was pushing time like I could not have not pushed even if I had wanted to like my my body just did it and so I held Liam's hand and I held Paula's hand and I pushed once and like a really long big push and I felt everything come down I was like oh please get out please because I mean I can't use words like power intensity now it just that was painful and then the, the surge went and I felt her move back up again I was like no get out and then I did this like scream that wasn't I couldn't recreate it even if I tried it was like guttural like this primal animal scream like uh, sort of like a uh, noise not like a ah, like, uh, but more and the head was born at 3 at uh, 10 a.m. and then the body was born at three minutes past ten and I picked her up and held her and it was just amazing and it was like I couldn't believe it yeah. Yeah. absolutely Hello, brilliant surreal moment even though I've been in labor for nine hours and I'd had nine months of pregnancy to hold her just felt so amazing and then we um, I delivered the placenta naturally myself in the notes it said placenta delivered naturally with maternal effort which I really liked I just stood up looked out into the garden felt another surge and that just came out and it was no pain at all um, and then we did, I got onto the sofa, like the midwives helped me just like clean me up a bit and I sat on the sofa and we weighed her and I held her for so long 
It's 3 p.m. and Liam had to nip out to go and get um forgotten oh um coconut oil for the baby because she's a bit dry. And Claire's here. I won't well, I will pan down, but let me just cover me a bit. We're having skin to skin. She's so lovely. And her sister's coming soon. Darcy's coming soon to meet her, but she, Darcy doesn't know that she's been born. I hope. Look at her. Oh, thanks, babe. Parasuitable for me. And it was just, oh, it was just so lovely. It was just such a different experience. It was just so calm and peaceful and relaxed and uncomplicated and un, un, uninvasive and... It was just lovely and I can't believe I did it without gas and air or any medication. I had planned to have gas and air, I had ordered gas and air in, um, so it's not like I was against it, it just never really happened, I just never thought to ask for it. It was just perfect, it was just everything I wanted, every box ticked for how I wanted it to be. I cannot thank um, Siobhan from the Positive Birth Company enough because without her it wouldn't have been what it was and also I can't thank Paula and Jane enough like i will forever be in their gratitude is that the right word i'll be in their debt because they were i couldn't have done it without them there and then also liam just amazing I feel like it was a team effort even though it was me like giving birth i feel like he was just as involved as i was and again without the hypnobirthing giving him a role and something to do and for him to understand it all i don't think it would have been the same scenario so yeah that is my story she was born at three minutes past ten on the 14th of january she was nine pound three she was a big baby and then i spent the rest of the afternoon and morning on the sofa just holding my sweet babe skin to skin um and darcy met her that day and <clears throat> it was just lovely but i will tell you more about darcy meeting her and everything another time um yeah there we go if you've got any questions leave them below because um, I'm sure I've missed things off. Um, I'm going to do an official Meet Pearl video next week and then also I'm going to be doing um, a postpartum recovery tips video because she's a big baby so there's a little bit of damage and you know every woman walks a journey of recovery the, the, the days afterwards so I've learned quite a lot this last 10 days so I thought I'd give you some tips and tricks and hacks for how to deal with that. Um, yeah, I hope I've included everything. I feel like I haven't. I feel like I've given you such a brief version, but I'm sure when I edit it together, it will be fine. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Um, a lovely, positive birth story. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.